Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is screencast number 7 in a series on electric power for Unit 4 VCE Physics. Today we'll be looking at power generation. So before we really jump right into it, let's think about what a generator is. Effectively it's made up of much the same, uh, uh, the same parts as a, a motor, electric motor, except they're doing the reverse job. So I've mentioned it a couple of times that we're using uh, or motor uses electrical energy to produce kinetic energy. A generator is doing the reverse. It's producing kinetic energy from, uh, using kinetic energy to produce electrical energy. The basic requirement to, to generate electricity is uh, this, this movement between the coil and the magnetic field. So inducing an EMF and effectively then a current. So if we recall the last screencast, if we want to produce an EMF, then we need to have a change in the flux that, uh, that, that the coil of, on the coil of the wire. Um, and that can be done either through rotation or changing the magnetic field. Now magnetic field is going to be constant in the generator. So in order to change the amount of flux, we rotate the loop. This is going to change the amount of area that the flux is passing through and therefore uh, the magnetic field is passing through and therefore change the flux. So if we consider this over a couple of stages, so if we start at maximum flux, we rotate through 90 degrees, there's zero flux because it is parallel to the field. As it continues to rotate, then it's now maximum flux again but negative in terms of the opposite it's passing through the coil in the opposite direction that it was as the coils rotated round uh, continues to rotate another 90 degrees and we have zero flux again and then we get back to the starting point where we have maximum flux so what we need to remember is that it's the changing field that's going to induce this EMF so when the flux is going from a, uh, a maximum flux to zero and then to negative, Lenz's law is basically telling us that the induced current is going to produce a field in the same direction as the original field. So as it rotates around 100 deg 180 degrees, it's actually producing the opposite field um, to resist that change. So what's going to happen is, and we'll look at this in, in a further detail, uh, is that the induced current will change direction every time we reach a maximum flux. So we go maximum flux and then it continues to rotate. Uh, the current, the direction of the currents, the induced current will ch then change. Okay, so let's look at some diagrams that will help explain what, uh, what we've just said there. So first picture is ones that we're familiar with. Let's relate that to graphs about uh, flux and the corresponding EMF. So here we've got maximum flux, zero flux, and then negative maximum flux because it's now 180 degrees the other way. Back to zero flux and then maximum flux again. So we kind of get this cyclic motion and then it will repeat as it uh, rotates again. However, let's have a look at the EMF that's induced. When we have maximum flux, we have no EMF. As it rotates, we produce a larger and larger EMF with the maximum corresponding to when it's parallel. Think of it this way, when it's cutting across the magnetic field lines, that's when it's going to uh, induce the most EMF because that's when, you know, think, think in terms of force and uh, force on a, a wire when it's moving through a magnetic field when it's carrying a current. So the w reverse is here. We're moving it through the field. We're, we're supplying the force. When it cuts those field lines, that's when it's going to induce the most current. Then it gets back to maximum flux here, corresponding to zero. And as I mentioned before, we get a change in the direction as it continues to rotate. So it rotates around to where it's parallel with the field, but cutting the most field lines. We get maximum, but it's now moving in the opposite direction as such. And then back to maximum flux, but zero uh, current or EMF. Okay, so they're out of phase by 90 degrees effectively. Maximum flux, we get zero. Zero flux, we get maximum current. 
maximum flux, zero current. Zero flux, maximum current, maximum flux, zero current. So for those of us that uh, would like to think of it in a higher order mathematical sort of way, the EMF is a negative rate of change of flux. So you know, it's kind of like a derivative of. And the maximum EMF, this is for everybody, occurs, and this is what I was talking about, maximum EMF when we've got zero flux. It's cutting the most lines, cutting the most field lines at that point. So let's uh, break this down, motion down into a quarter of a rotation at a time and look at the current that's going to be induced throughout the rotation. And we'll be using right hand slap rule and Lenz's law in order to determine uh, the direction of the current at any given point. So to start with, let's have a look at the loop being vertical. So we've got maximum flux. We've got zero current because it's not really cutting any lines at this point here. Okay, These here are for AC motors and AC generators. They are called slip rings. And basically what it means is the same part of the coil is always attached to the same exit point. So this, this slip ring here is always attached to this part of the coil and this part of the coil is always attached to this slip ring. Unlike the split ring commutator which changes which side of the coil it's touching every half a rotation, these always maintain that contact with the same part of the coil. <coughs> so if we look at that from a side on point of view, here we've got zero current and it's about to rotate looking at the cross section here. So this is about to cut field lines in a downward direction. This is about to cut field lines in an upward direction. So we have zero current. Now it's been through a quarter of a rotation. Here we've got minimum flux or zero flux and we've got maximum current being induced because we have maximum field lines being cut. So what that means is as it rotates at this point here halfway through that 180 degree rotation or 90 degrees in is where it's going to be cutting at right angles. So we're going to have that maximum current at this point. Okay let's go around another quarter of a rotation. So here we're back to maximum flux no field lines being cut and so we are back to zero current. Okay so next quarter of the rotation we go back down so this side which was previously going up is now going down. This side that was going down originally is now going up. What effect is that going to have on the current that's being produced? Well, because it's cutting in the opposite direction, the direction of the current will have been reversed. Okay, so we now have maximum current because we're now cutting perpendicular to. We have no flux. And so because of that change in direction for the loop or the sides of the loop itself, we have maximum current but in the opposite direction. Okay, we now go through another quarter of a turn. We're back to the beginning as such. Okay, where we're going to, or if we did keep going, we would continue to get that loop and the, the pattern would continue. We'd sort of get this sine wave occurring, which is what we call our AC current or alternating current. It's going one direction, then it's going the opposite direction. So back here, we're back to zero current because we've got maximum flux. We're not cutting the field lines. Okay, so as it starts again, direction changes, so at maximum flux, the direction of the current changes, we get positive or, you know, say clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, anti and so on. So let's have a look at that in action with a generator. So we've got the two slip rings, you can see this point here is attached to this side. Okay, it's at maximum flux, we have zero EMF. So let's get this going. 
it begins to rotate. Maximum voltage occurs when these field lines are being cut at this point here. Okay, and you'll notice that the voltage keeps oscillating from positive now to negative in a half rotation. And then back another half rotation later and we have positive voltage again. Okay, what happens if we change its direction? So it's going this way, it's got positive, change direction, instantly we get from negative to positive. So if we keep changing its direction, because of the direction of motion, it changes the direction of the induced EMF. Okay, I was rudely interrupted by a teacher just then, so sorry. Where were we? We're looking at rotations, time of rotation. What will happen to the induced EMF if we speed up the rotation? Okay, go twice as fast, we would expect twice the induced EMF. Or if we go half as fast, will it let us go? No, it won't quite let us go three, but we will get only a fraction of a you know, proportional fraction of the induced EMF. Okay, so the the principal, I guess, features of an AC generator include the, the following things. We have a rotating coil inside a magnetic field, like the DC motor, or alternatively, we rotate the magnetic field inside the uh, coils. We use slip rings, they keep contact with the brushes, and what happens is the output, every half cycle, the, the EMF will change its direction as we were seeing on that galvanometer a second ago. So that, that's the out, AC output, the alternating current, it changes directions every 180 degrees of the rotation. The result really is that we get an output that varies sinusoidally, that is it, it produces the sine curve. So let's look at those features again. Coil cutting through the magnetic field attached to slip rings. Okay, a common question will be why slip rings over split ring commutator or explain the difference between the way they function or something to that effect. So expect to see that one on your exam. Okay, and let's have a look. Here's those diagrams again. Maximum flux, that relationship. Maximum flux corresponds to zero induced EMF, zero current, zero flux, that's when we get the maximum because that's when it's cutting down perpendicular, the direction is down, cutting through those field lines and so on. So it's the sinusoidal wave gets produced and it's always like 90 degrees behind the change in flux. So the amplitude of the EMF is going to be proportional to or depends on a couple of things. Number of turns, put more turns, you've got more coils inducing, so therefore you're going to produce a greater number of, a greater, a greater EMF frequency of rotation. You spin it around faster, then you're going to induce a greater EMF because the rate of change of flux is much larger. Increase the magnetic field strength, okay? That has to do with the flux, so increase that and the area of the coil, again, directly related to the flux. And so how would this vary to, say, a DC um, generator? So we'd have a split ring commutator, much like you would on the electric motor. And what that does, so this is a key, key statement, it reverses the direction of the EMF every half a cycle so that the output is pulsed DC. I'll show you a diagram uh, in just a second of what we mean by that. Uh, and some would have multiple coils, much like the, the motor which gives us multiple peaks and it gives you a smoother output. And again, I'll show you a picture of what that would look like. Um, so this, this smoothing idea, trying to get more like a pure DC, a constant uh, current that's flowing. Okay, so Let's have a look here, this is DC, split ring commutator. So what's happening here is, as we understand it, as the loop rotates, every half turn, the direction in the loop is actually changing. However, because the side of the loop that uh, is touching the uh, one side of the commutator, 
uh, changes changes the brush it's attached to, the result is every half turn we get this uh, this, this same sort of curve except it's all positive because the output, the one that's attached to the positive side always is attached to a positive side because of the every half turn swapping over. So let's compare. We've got AC alternating every rotation. DC every half rotation we get the pulses. If we have multiple coils it's kind of like um, you know, addition of waves here. We get superposition, we get uh, this positive increase and we just get this sort of smooth but a much more constant output from the DC motor. Okay, so the more coils you have, the smoother that that's going to get. So a smoother or an improved AC generator would be the alternator. So here you have the coil on the outside, you have an electromagnet that's inside that's rotating. As that rotates, that induces the current in this coil to the AC output. The reason that this is going to be a lot better is because we, we effectively we're not using a commutator here so we're not you know there's one thing less that's going to experience wear and tear uh, every time it sparks as it changes you're going to wear on cause wear on your um, brushes that that are attached to the commutator only AC current can be induced this way um, but you can induce quite large currents which is a bonus if you're trying to generate electricity three phase okay three phase electricity if you have a whoops if we have a coil on each of these here then we're going to experience maximum sorry rudely interrupted with a phone call then okay oh and an email now people just leave won't leave me alone today okay so we've got this electromagnet spinning and we're going to have maximum um, induction occurring at you know point one, then at point two, then at point three. So each of them, you know, every sort of sixty degrees of that circle is going to be hitting a peak, and you know, and then uh, after one hundred and eighty degrees, we're sort of getting to that reverse peak. So we've kind of got electricity out of three different places, all being produced, um, all slightly out of phase. So, you know, the question, would you go an AC or a DC generator? Um, effectively, AC generators are going to be cheap, they're simpler and more reliable than a DC generator. And the big bonus of an AC voltage is that we can easily step that up or down at the site of generation or at the consumer. And we'll talk a lot more about that in the next uh, screencast on Transformers Robots in Disguise.